Are you still watching unsubbed? Hey, subscribe, will you? Hey guys, welcome back to another WordPress uh, development tutorial. And today I just wanted to start by saying thank you to everybody who has subscribed so far. I just crossed the 100 subscriber mark, so that feels pretty good uh, on the on the Warpath to 1,000 uh, to as a first big milestone. So, But we crossed 100, and that feels pretty good. And I just want to, once again, say thank you to every single person who has subscribed so far. I hope that all this stuff really does help you out and that you're getting uh, your subscriptions worth out of what I'm showing you here. So, okay, back to what we're dealing with here. Last time I left off, we were on this page where we had just kind of put together this really basic, uh, and it's not even super aesthetically pleasing, uh, page to kind of just give a basic view to the user of our settings but we didn't register these fields these are registered in our settings and we're going to register these as well and then we can and then from here once i show you how to do that like i showed you over here you can register unlimited uh settings for this as well as we're going to register our short code and all that but in this video actually what we're going to do is we're going to focus on our importer page and what i want to do here since as you remember all of this code that was in our settings page, it's currently in our settings page, was actually originally on the importer page and I moved it because I wanted it to be our settings page. But that left our uh, importer page blank. This is actually just the code that I copied and then pasted. Uh, or actually I haven't pasted it yet. Sorry, I'm not going to paste it. This stuff I left out because I don't want it to run every single time we're loading the page. And I showed how to fix that with get and post and we're actually going to do that. But today I just wanted to create the buttons and then kind of give you an idea of how they're going to work. So we would start by, uh, I want to take you back to the bootstrap. Now I can write 99% of this from memory. I just wanted to do it to show you if you're somebody who started and you, and you can't, you can easily pick and pull from the uh, bootstrap documentation every single time. So let's just head right into the grid. I want to make a three grid column. It's the first one when you pop in. That's because I want a button that says um, import, renew, and delete. And remember we were going to set that up. So let's grab this. And then let's head straight back into our import call. Remember, that's the callback that's being called by the importer page. We're going to paste it right here above this PHP. And remember another thing, guys, I keep iterating too, is that I'm not trying to make this thing super complicated, precise coding. I'm just trying to get it to where even if the coding isn't the prettiest coding on the planet, it just shows you that you can actually whip something up even as a beginner or as somebody who's just trying to be street smart and put something together. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? There's a lot of people who stress, oh, it has to be perfect code, it has to look perfect. I'm not going to be one of those people, so just so you know. And I've been coding a long time. So we're just going to do some inline styling. I usually don't do inline styling, but remember I told you that WordPress for some reason has an issue with the width on these uh, grid systems. I don't know why it does that, where it kind of pushes the last item off the right side of the page. And then I'm also going to, um, I'm going to text line uh, center as well, because I want all these text centered. So if we go ahead and refresh this, you're going to see, there it is. I don't know why I didn't reload. Okay, so there it is. Now all our text is centered and they're all pulled in three column wide. Perfect. Now another thing I want to do is let's head back to Bootstrap System. And remember under Components, you have all of your components, buttons and all that. We're going to be grabbing buttons and alerts. And then alerts, I want to take this blue color and make it our entire backdrop. So we could take pri alert primary. And back in here, not in the style, but in the class that has the row, you can actually put it right after a row. And then when we go back, they'll all be blue. And then I actually want to convert these tops into h4s now remember with Emmet you can just type h4 and then tab and it'll give you that and the other day i was trying to show classes and you can do that by adding a class and just say custom class and then hit tab and now it has a custom class okay it wasn't working because i was pasting in i was doing dot and then control v whatever i had pasted and then hitting it and it wasn't working and that makes me wonder let's just take like max control c h4 dot and then paste and see if you hit tab it doesn't work but I wonder that if you type max if you just take the last character off and hit X in it it will do it you see that so even if you have something really long to paste paste it remove the last character re-add the last character and it will re-pull up Emmet okay so I just wanted to correct that from last time because I kinda screwed that up last time by pasting alright so back to using Emmet for the H4 okay we're gonna say click this button to import all YouTube videos and then we'll do a error check on this as well and we're probably going to do a form or a field at the top that lets you know um, if it was successful and all that too which I'll, I'll show that as well we'll probably build something for that too you'll see what I mean kind of like an alert system that shows you like hey the video successfully imported they successfully deleted and they successfully renewed please want to pull YouTube videos from the channel this next one is renew slash update YouTube videos. 
I keep telling you guys too, I'm a really good typer actually, but I, I have an ergonomic keyboard on my desktop and this is a laptop keyboard, so I have to like, my hands are totally different. Update uh, YouTube videos. And then the last one here is the same thing, it's just an H4. And this one's just gonna say, delete all YouTube videos. Now, if we go back to the front end, you'll see it's gonna have a nice uh, blue uh, standard background and some nice headers for each one all on their own. So let's go ahead and, and actually you're going to see the buttons are misaligned. This is going to need a line break to align them. So let's head back to here and go to buttons and let's grab a success button for our first one, a uh, warning button and a danger button. So let's go uh, primary button success and we're going to put that right under here. Let's go for a button warning put that right under the second one once again guys the reason i'm showing you how to do this straight off bootstraps documentation is so that you could do this yourself you could follow easily along with this tutorial and not get lost anywhere because i'm just pulling a lot of code straight from places and just compiling which is the secret they don't tell you as a programmer anyway 90 percent of it is compiling okay so we should have a couple of buttons now yoink Remember what I said about this one, it's going to be sitting too high. We could actually fix that with a line break. We could also margin it or whatever. Okay. So that's looking, you know, not the best in the world. <laughs> like, this is kind of just uh, utility. We could make this look way better than this. But uh, for utility's sake, we're going the right direction here. All right, now let's go drop down and take a look at making the buttons a little bit larger. So we have large... Uh, extra large, so we have button BTN LG. Let's take that class and add it to the end of our button classes. So success, BTN large, BTN large, and BTN large. And it should go ahead and make all these buttons large. It should push up their sizes. Okay, and we don't want them to say that stuff, obviously. We want this to say import. We want this one to say renew. And we want this one to say delete all. Okay. One more quick refresh will show us. We are in action, okay. We're in business here, so now we're getting ready to actually program these to do something, because as of right now, if you click it, nothing happens, right? The buttons don't have any programming at all. And this is where I bring us to the part where I talked about post and get. And the reason why this is important is because I'm actually gonna do something really simple with these to make them do their functions. Since this is an administrative side only feature, user doesn't mess with this at all, so there's really no chance of any kind of um, mischievous or devious stuff going on from a user who's trying to harm your site or you because you're going to be the only one using it and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it so that these buttons each refresh to this page and add a new query and the query is going to be import renew or delete all and it's going to have an action so it's going to look like this remember when I taught you about get variables we're going to use get and that means anything after the right here okay the question mark that's a variable, and this is what the variable is equal to. Everything after a question mark, you use an ampersand, and that becomes a new variable. If there is no question mark, you have to add a question mark for your first variable. So in this case, we would say, we're not going to do this, oh, we're going to do this programmatically, but here's what it's going to look like. One of them is going to say import as the action. One of them is going to say renew, and one of them is going to say delete. And when we do that, this page will know what to do. We're going to make a a capture right down here very first thing in PHP it's gonna read in the variable and it's gonna say okay is the action variable set yes it is okay then we need to figure out what the user is trying to do and then do that thing and hand them back the result so if the user says an action or if it's import it'll come here and say import and that's what it do do all this stuff inside the import right and then that's basically what the code is gonna do it's gonna say tell me what it does and that's what I'm gonna do all right, so the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to create these as forms, and then we're just going to give them an action that goes to the same page, and I'll show you that right now. All right, so here's how we're going to do that. We're going to take a form, like I said, and we're going to wrap each of these buttons in their own form that just goes ahead and refreshes this page to itself and then adds the action variable. And that, while that sounds easy, it can be a little tricky, and here's why. If you just add a form and you leave the action empty, in most HTML, it will make the page just refresh to itself, right? Like, let's just do it real quick. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Once again, let me apologize ahead for this video being longer than 10 minutes because it's going to be. So we're going to make this a get form with an action like I showed you before. We're going to leave the action empty versus you write something in here like it goes to another PHP page or something, right? That's what actions are for. And then let's close the form. 
Dang it. All right. So if we do this, and the button, we change it to type submit. Okay, before it was type button, but I changed it to submit. Okay, that means it's going to submit this form now. We've created a, a small form around this import button. Right, but when we refresh it, watch what happens. This is a small issue that you're going to run into. Watch what it does with the URL. It doesn't know what to do. Okay, it doesn't know where to go. It lost all the data after this, including the page. Now, if we go back, you'll see what I mean. See how it has page and the page for this? So what we need to do is actually capture this and then rebuild it on the output. Okay, and it's kind of um, tricky, and I'm sure there's another way to do it, but this is a pretty quick way to do it using get variables. So I'm going to show you that right now. Go ahead and leave the action empty. And inside the form, we're going to create an input that is a hidden. So we're going to go type hidden. Then we're going to say the value equals, and we're going to say the name equals. Now remember, on a form that's submitted via get, the, the name is the name of the variable. In this case, it's like page, or what I was going to add is action. That's the name of the variable. It's going to get sent, and then the value is what you can get. So for example, this is page, and this is the value. If we wanted to get that, let's go up here into this opening PHP tag, and let's create a new variable called the cur page for the current page, and it's going to equal the dollar sign underscore all capital get, and then we're going to add, and we're going to say page, because we are getting this page variable, and what's in it is what's going to be stored in our variable. And I'll show you that right now. So let's say echo, let's echo out, you probably guessed it, the cur page. Let's see what the cur page does, and we're not going to do anything with this form yet, let's just refresh the page and see what happens. Look at this. So when we build our output, here's what we have to do. We have to rebuild it with page as our first variable. And what do you think the value is? Take a quick guess. I'm just commenting this for us. Get the current page. So we're going to get rid of this echo. And now right here we have a variable that's capturing the current page. Where can we output that? Right here. We can open up a PHP right here. Make sure to close it. Then in here, open an echo statement, and what are we going to echo? The cur page. Now, why can that variable be accessed from down here? Well, because we're in the same page, PHP can access the same variables established above down here. As long as it's within PHP call tags, it can re retake the variable and work on it down here. So now we have a hidden submit type that's called named page. I don't know why there's a second one of those in there. That's named page, okay? and it's going to have the value of the page. Why is that important? Because it has to do that in order to know where to refresh to. Then we need to create one more. Okay, and the next one is the same as the first one. It's a type hidden. And it's going to have a value of import, because this is our import button, right? And the name is going to be action. Okay, so what we've done here is we've created a form around this button that we changed to a submit we added a get we made it a get with an action of going to the same page but we needed to add a hidden type for the name of the, for the page type and gather it in order to output it and then the action so let's go ahead and refresh the page and then I'll click the button and you'll see so let's click it and as you can see we're now on the same page we have page as our starting variable with the page and then get look at this import so we've now done that successfully. So how do you think we create or how do you think we do this on the other two buttons? We can actually take this exact thing right here, this opening form, and just copy it down. Paste it right on down. Because it's the same exact thing. We still need the page, right? And then we need to change this button to a submit type also. Right? And then we need one more hidden input right here under the first one, which is the type or the action. And this one it's gonna be renew and then close. The form. See that? Okay, let's do it again. Let's take actually all three of these lines, paste them down, and then we're going to say this one is delete. And close out the form. All right, so back on our page here, we can run the, re, uh, you know, just refresh the page. Let's click renew. We should have action renew. We should have action delete. Oh, yeah, I didn't make it a submit type. There you go. There's my problem. So let's go back to import. 
let's run through them again import renew delete perfect here we are so now we have a functional page at this point point. and so what do you think we do next what do you think we do next because I'm gonna end this one right here I don't want it to get too long and the next one guess what we're gonna do we're gonna build our PHP page based on the get post page I taught or where I taught you this and how we're gonna do that is exactly like I showed you guess where all the YouTube import comes from if the page reads a variable if is set the action variable in the URL here and if it contains import do all of this if it contains renew there's gonna be a second set of code if it contains delete do the third set of code okay and we're gonna keep this all on this page versus trying to create the you know like initialize a class and put all these uh, functions in a class I'm just gonna do them right here on this page so we can keep it all kind of together for this tutorial so anyway and then also we still have to uh, you know on our callbacks page we still have to create the other form settings for this other group which will be pretty short I'm not sure if I'll do that in the next video or if we'll get started on this I I'm not sure yet you'll just have to wait and find out so hey like I say in the beginning of every video if you're not subscribed subscribe well yeah and uh, once again thanks everybody for 100 subs I, I feel pretty good about that uh, it, it feels good to know that people are getting help out of this stuff so anyway well, uh, like comment and subscribe and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next one